voting proceeded for a few minutes with eventually the lesser party of the two, the militia party, retrograding from the field and leaving, running through the woods, escaping. Now, the other party, uh, having cast their votes, decided they'd look for another election. And so they went down the road to Concord. And at Concord, when they met the next election, it was even worse. Okay, And from that point forward, they decided it wasn't time to vote anymore, but as we say, unass the AO and head for Boston. Okay, That's how it worked. And nobody can show you a cast ballot because there wasn't one except for that one ounce ball. Now, when I ask again about authority, I'm going to remind you of something. There is a point where you reach what is literally the limit. I have stood on the line, and I have faced my enemy, and I have, I have expected to die. I have been a soldier in the militia, and we have cast our ballot several times where we've stepped forward to vote. Okay? Now, there's a point with that where you have to decide to cast all fear away. Now, do you know what my enemy did? With one of them, my favorite is actually this happened, and there were, there were many good men who stood with me. And I was just to the point where, you know what, it looks like today is going to be the day. And that black clad son of a bugger stood there with an MP5 about where that gentleman is right there initially. And every foul word you can imagine as he pointed the weapon at me, while he tried to, of course, keep the weapon down, I turned and I did this, and I lined the barrel up every time he moved it. And I said, you know what? The only thing we have to worry about today is what we're going to do with the dead and the dying and what we're going to do about the wounded. And other than that, it looks like we're going to war. Now, you know what? I stepped towards him, and there were 300 of them. And there were a little under 150, but there were several hundreds of us coming. And as I got closer, that very well armed, and I was just as equally armed, individual used every foul word you can think of. He absolutely sounded like a bar, the barroom lowlife, okay? When we got about 15 feet away and I kept that barrel lined up, all of a sudden he stopped all of his swearing and his voice cracked and he went, I got a wife and kids at home! <laughs> My children were behind me. Mostly the age of these young ones right here. So I didn't have, I didn't care about that. But you know what he did? He wet his pants, and these people ran. They almost ran over each other. They almost killed each other. In fact, the biggest problem we had was backing, stepping back, just so they wouldn't kill each other. But my point is this: they look really great when it comes to beating up men, women, or children alone in their home. But when they face free men who are armed and who are armed with knowledge and are armed with righteousness, then there is no power that will stand before these men. And that is you, the patriot element, and the militia. Amen. You keep that in mind. We have, There is nothing that the enemy has that I want. There is nothing that I want to take from any of you. For there is nothing that I am doing but defending that which is our common right, which is our liberty. That's all we're interested in. I want my country back. I want our country free. And anybody who thinks that they're going to take any of that from us or that we're going to put up with any more of it is an insane fool with a brain about this big. That's why you got to shoot them three, twice in the, three times in the head because you got to try and hit that spot. <laughs> okay? It's very small, hard to hit. You may not do well. Okay, But that is how we must face this threat, people. You know what? We may die. What are you going to do? Threaten me with heaven? <laughs> if you do truly have faith in your God, God, our God above, our Creator, then what can you threaten me with? Nothing. Because I have full confidence if I fell tonight, I would be with the next legion will be behind you. Okay? victory. Okay? Now, 
We end this because I know we got to go. But we're going to go, but we're not going to go. Well, wait a minute. We can. We. Uh, we. <laughs> so we'll let Mark say a few more words, and then we'll go off on some other tangents here. How's that? <laughs> well, okay. Now whoa, we're back, and uh, and we as as we pointed out, one of the things, the reason I think the militia issue is so for, so important is because remember, your enemy doesn't like it. Chances are, it's good for you. Okay. <laughs> Um, but the militia is not just a separate little group of people off to the side. The militia is the whole of the people. Now, somebody will say, well, I'm too old or I'm too young. Well, everybody and anybody can help and support the militia in every way, in any way you can imagine. It's not just combat troops, it's support personnel. It's not just support personnel, it's manufacturing. It's not just manufacturing, it's communications. It's everything you can think of to keep people in the, in the field and to support those people once they're in the field. One of the things that I, we have to remember is the militia is not an offensive force. It has been made an offensive force in the techni through the technicalities of Title X United States Code. But in reality, and in fact as I pointed out in a couple of writings that I've done in several publications recently, the whole concept of the militia in its original form actually prevented American incursion and slowed things down. Probably the best example of this is what happened in the War of 1812. In the end of the War of 18, actually, well, we'll say the last year of the War of 1812, American militia forces constituted, in fact, through the whole of the War of 1812, they constituted 90% of the fighting strength of the U.S. military period in all categories. Even the Navy was mostly constituted with local militia forces. Remember, we weren't, we weren't a, a, an expeditionary force moving across the planet. We were defending desperately our continental shelf we were just we were defending our internal uh, states to whatever degree, and we had to fight even in the territories. Now, where I live, I'm up in Michigan. I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, you keep using the word militia, Mark, and perhaps there are somebody out there that doesn't really quite understand exactly what you mean by militia. Militia. Okay, yeah, well, here we go. The, first of all, the militia it constitutes all, although, again, ladies wouldn't necessarily like this, but... The uh, guys, guys, we're we're built with different plumbing. Ladies, that's our job. We don't have aren't quite as complicated, so it's a little easier for us to do things that other people can't do, okay, or shouldn't do. And with our our philosophy, now I'll lay a groundwork for this. We are men of the West, of Western civilization. We have a different philosophy with regard to how we look upon our our women and our children. There used to be a policy, which of course you'll notice they rub this in with movies and everything else constantly. And, I, and it's not a joke, but it's used as a joke, women and children first. Ha ha ha. No, we thought that way because the warrior caste always will preserve life first, and that includes our women and our children.